Hello students, welcome to Drishti IAS. The Union Cabinet has approved the rationalization of the royalty rates of four critical minerals. So in this video, we are first going to understand what do we mean by critical minerals and what is the rationalization of their royalty rates. So here we are going to talk about four critical minerals in particular. But before we do that, let's quickly see what do we mean by critical minerals. So what do you mean by critical minerals? Critical minerals are those minerals which are highly important, highly essential for the development of any country due to the wide use that these minerals have across various sectors. So they are considered to be critical because of their high importance. High importance particularly in the modern sectors like the electronic vehicle industry or the semiconductor industry, aerospace industry, defense industry, nuclear industry etc. So they have a high usage in all these industries that is why they are considered to be critical. And secondly they are considered to be critical because of a high risk of supply. What do you mean by high risk of supply? This means that these minerals are not that easily available. They are not widely available and even if they are available, we do not have the technology to use them, to extract them and use them for our development. We lack in adequate technology, which means that these minerals are A, limited in availability and even if they are available, we do not have the adequate technology, which makes us dependent on imports and in today's world the monopoly of the availability and the extraction of critical minerals and rare earth minerals belongs to China. So any disruption that happens in China is automatically going to cause a global supply chain disruption. That is why it is very important for countries like India to A, diversify their markets and B, increase their own domestic supply, their own domestic dependence so that we can reduce our import dependence on other countries. And in this direction only, in order to reduce our import dependence, the government has rationalized the royalty rates. Now understand what used to happen earlier and then you will be able to appreciate the whole picture. So earlier what used to happen, no royalty rates were fixed. So how does mining happen? Mining of critical minerals happen in India. It doesn't just happen like this that the companies just go today and they start digging anywhere and then extract the mineral. It doesn't happen like that. There's a proper procedure that has to be followed where the first step is mineral block identification which is done by the government. Mineral block identification means that area of land, like areas of land, they are actually identified and an estimate is made by the government based on the geological surveys that this particular mineral might be present in this area of land and this is the amount of weight that we are anticipating to be extracted from this particular block of land. So that becomes our mineral block and this is identified based on geological surveys conducted by the government of India and once these mineral blocks are identified they are put up for auction. This is where the companies participate. They send in their tenders and the most competitive bid wins and the mineral land is leased out to that company. Mineral block is leased out to that company for extraction. And then the extraction of mineral happens. After proper exploration, proper research, the extraction of mineral happens. And then these companies have to pay a royalty. A royalty to whom? To the government. Who pays the royalty? Companies pay the royalty to the government of India. And then they can sell 
the mineral wherever they like. Now earlier these royalty rates were not defined. Only the mineral block was defined. An estimate was given that this mineral might be present here. This is the approximate weight of the mineral that we are expecting. But no royalty rate was defined. And when royalty rates are not defined, the companies did not feel motivated, they did not feel encouraged enough to, in, uh, to participate in the bidding because they did not know what they were bidding for. How much will they have to pay later? So no predictability was there. If you do not know what you will need to pay later, so based on the selling price, you don't know what's going to happen. If tomorrow you extract a mineral and you do not get enough money for that, but the government sets exorbitant rates for that, exorbitant royalty rates for that, you'll have to pay the government irrespective of your selling price, selling price of the material, selling price or the quality of the mineral that you have explored, it does not matter. You will have to pay a royalty because the royalty earlier A was not fixed, it was not defined. So the government could do anything that it liked. So because of the unpredictability over here, transparency was not there and the companies did not feel encouraged enough or motivated enough to participate in the auction process. That is why the auction did not happen, this bidding did not happen, mineral extraction did not happen and we were heavily dependent on imports only because our domestic supply chain was not strengthening. This used to happen earlier. For graphite, there was a royalty rate that was fixed but that royalty rate was fixed per ton. And now the royalty rates have been moved to add valorem basis which means according to value and this makes more sense because let's say you extracted a mineral but that mineral was of low quality and you did not get the adequate selling price for that but the government earlier used to fix per ton for only graphite not for the other three but for graphite there was per ton uh, per ton of royalty rate that was fixed so if per ton royalty rate was thousand rupees you had to pay 1000 rupees even if you got only 2000 rupees or even 200 rupees after selling your mineral because the royalty rate was fixed per ton. But now the royalty rate has been attached to the value. It has been attached to the selling price. So according to value, the percentage has been defined. Percentage is not important for us. It is 1%, 2%, 4% for different minerals. That data is not important for us. But we need to understand that it has now been fixed add valorem according to value we'll be paying a price if the value increases if the selling price increases the royalty can increase and it makes sense but if the value decreases or the selling price decreases the royalty will also decrease this is a more fair and a transparent approach a more predictable approach for the companies and the companies can finally come forward and participate in the bidding and this is important for strengthening our domestic supply chain. So for graphite we used to have per ton. Now I told you that there are four critical minerals that we were talking about. First was graphite where we had this per ton royalty fixed. Then the others were cesium, rubidium, and zirconium. For these three, no royalty rates were fixed and for all these, we are heavily import dependent on other countries. For graphite, approximately 60% is coming from imports. And for all these also, some 80-90% is coming from imports only. We are not domestically extracting as much because the companies are not motivated here. The royalty rates were not defined at all. And if they are not defined simply based on an estimate, you cannot go and put in your money. This was the problem that the companies were facing earlier. Unpredictability was the problem that these countries were facing earlier. And these critical minerals also, like other critical minerals, they are extremely important. Like graphite. Graphite is used in electrodes. It is used in semiconductors. It is used in the lithium-ion batteries in the electronic vehicle industry. Then we have cesium. Cesium is used in atomic clocks, in the GPS, etc. 
Then we have rubidium. Rubidium is used in fiber optics, in telecommunications, in medical instruments, night vision devices, etc. Then we have zirconium. Zirconium is used in nuclear reactors. So for India to have a stable nuclear program, it needs to have the availability of zirconium. So all these critical minerals, they are extremely important. All these four critical minerals are extremely important for the development of India and earlier because the royalty rates were not fixed and if they were fixed, they were fixed per ton and not according to value. The companies were not feeling motivated to participate in the bidding and because they were not participating in the bidding, extraction was not happening and India's domestic supply chain was suffering. And not only these four minerals, but many a times what happens that there are associated minerals associated minerals which are found when we go looking for or extracting one particular mineral so we are looking for some mineral but there are associated minerals that are found while exploring that area and those associated minerals in these cases were lithium tungsten niobium etc and all these associated minerals are also extremely important and because the companies were not exploring the area, they were not extracting the area, minerals were not being extracted, these elements just stayed hidden as they were. These minerals stayed hidden and then again India was at a disadvantage because we were losing out on these critical minerals as well as the associated minerals. But now if the companies come and participate more in the auction process, more in the bidding process, they come and they extract more mineral blocks, we can hope that our domestic supply chain is going to strengthen and our import dependence can finally reduce. So that was all for today's analysis. I hope you enjoyed everything that we discussed over here. Now let's look at a practice question for prelims. Consider the following statements regarding critical minerals in India. A. Cesium, rubidium, zirconium were recently notified with ad valorem, ad valorem royalty rates for the very first time. 2. Mineral blocks of these critical minerals could not be auctioned earlier because royalty rates had not been defined. 3. Lithium, tungsten and rare earth elements are often found in association with cesium and rubidium deposits. How many of the statements given above is or are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none. Please attempt this question and provide your answers in the comment section. Thank you for watching and stay tuned to Drishti IAS because something very exciting is on the way. Thank you. For more informative content, like, share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.